Hello and welcome. This is uh, just a supplemental to uh, building the wing and as promised I think it would be a good idea to actually show you how I put this wing in. You will notice that I have the blue glider, uh, not the red one. I bought this last July, I bought about eight or nine of these things because I just like making them. They're cool aren't they? Right there you go. And you can make them into all sorts of different shapes. I just wish Little would make Spitfires. <laughs> that would be cool. huh? Anyway, so we have our wing and where we left off last time was we had the servo in and the linkages and everything else to make sure that's all nice and sturdy. And this end we left blank and if you recall we don't glue anything in until the wing is in and we know it's all working very very important don't glue anything till you know it's working so we have to get these two cables into the fuselage and guess what there's no real easy way of doing it so I'm just going to show you how I do it and basically I'll be using something thin like a lollipop stick or something like that okay and you'll see why in just a moment so turning this the right way up and knowing that the starboard side or the right hand side has the free end we push the wing in I'll turn it back over and we'll pull this cable back out not all the way just some of the way and you'll end up with a gap you see the gap there finger in it you pop your cable into there and it will hopefully be seen inside the fuselage I was about to say the fuzz and you get yourself some long nose pliers because I've got very thin fingers and try and grab the cable and if you're lucky unlike me you'll get it first time now because I'm making a video it won't play ball so waggle it around a bit ah oh, yes that's a lot easier grab that and there you go come on there you go there's the end of it so now you can push the wing a bit further I don't know an easier way to do this if I'm being honest with you. So maybe somebody does. Well, I don't know of one. Making sure that you put a little bit of tension and pull it through a little bit. The lead that is. And you carry on until you get to the next lead. Now, this doesn't need to be all pulled out obviously. And what you've got to do is push it between the wing and the fuselage which I know you can't see too well but I'm not a producer or a cameraman or anything like that and you just got to get it between the gap push it in look for your lollipop stick and just gently as you can but firmly push that through and if you're really lucky you'll find it on the inside of the fuzz are we going to find it on the inside of the fence? Yeah, I can see it. Where's my little stick? There you go. And push that. There you go. Drop it along those pliers. There's the other end of it. Okay, that's now manageable. And we can carry on pushing the wing through. All you've got to do then is just get your cable, push it back into the slot. And because you've not made a very deep slot as such, or a very wide slot, I should say, it should. Oh, there you go. It should go straight back in. Sorry about the bad camera work, but um, you know, I'm not one of these big YouTubers who got all the equipment and 
some girl or another, you know, some student at the other end of the camera. It's just an old bloke in a, well, in a garage. Anyway, so <clears throat> there's your two cables. Now what we need to do is you've got to grab your Y lead. Now my Y lead has decided to disappear and I wonder where I put it. Uh, oh here it is. <laughs> it is. I've, <laughs> I've plugged it into the receiver. On this re uh, receiver the uh, elevator is number three and the ailerons is number two. Okay, just in case you have the same receiver, which is a Spectrum AR410. I use Spectrum because it works. Anyway, so you get the energy lead. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these you plug into, as long as you've got the same colour cables. So I've got brown at the bottom, brown at the bottom on this one. And you just push it in. There you go. Got the other one. Match up the colours, push it in, there you go. Now this is the exciting part where we turn on the radio. This is a Spectrum DX6i. The latest one is, um, I don't know, 9 or 10 or something. It's a bit like iPhones. They upgrade them. And note that I'm using a Dean's connector. On Well, this, this comes with a Dean's connector, so you have to have a a battery connection which is also a DIN connection some people call this a T connection um, this one I'm going to change this uh, connection because uh, it's not very good on the positive side but I've, that's coming in the post so I have to waggle it a little bit to make it work obviously you don't want to be flying this when you have a not so good connection and that's telling me that all is good now just to check things out Never ever put your propeller on while you're doing all this stuff because pound to a penny you'll hit your throttle it'll spin you'll either whack your finger off or dig into the um, work surface and break your prop and bits of nylon are flying everywhere and it's just not worth it but to just show you that it works there you go and I happen to know that's spinning the correct way because I checked it earlier <laughs> Right, and the elevator is working, and hopefully, yeah, the ailerons now. Let's have a look. Now, this one is obviously going to need a lot of just. Now, this is a very good reason why you should not glue in the servo because I've got to adjust this, so that's going to pop out. Come on, that's it. Okay, that centralises the server. And now all I've got to do, pop that up, and obviously put that in at 90 degrees. There we go. Pop it back in. There we are. Yeah, so. That's working, plenty of movement. So, we now come to this side. Now this should be centralised. So, this is called a horn. Take the horn, screwdriver, pop it out, which I can't because I didn't glue it. Pop the horn on. In the vertical position. Now, this means that all I've got to do take this control horn and glue it into place. Now I always use um, five minute epoxy so what I'm going to do I'm going to mix up some epoxy glue it on and I'll come back okay see you in a moment right well this is now glued in I put the rod in which you've already seen me do before and you can probably tell that this aileron needs towing in this way and this aileron needs towing in out that way 
So that's quite easy to do. If you've never done it before, you merely undo it like this. Spin it this way to make the log, the, the log, <laughs> the rod longer. Okay, and you pop it back in, and you see how that adjusts. It looks about right to me. I'm just going to put that in properly. Oh, always on video. Here we go. There. You are. Ooh, yeah. Come on. I know you want to. There you go. Yeah, that looks about right. This other one here, because it's pointing down, this needs to be shorter. So you can see now why you need all this thread nearly halfway up the uh, the linkage. So just undo that. Yeah. and wind that in a couple of turns and then we just open it up with the screwdriver there you go that could go probably in a little bit more actually so wind it in one more put it back there you go about right I'm not usually this lucky adjusting things, but there you go. So, are they working? Yes, they are working, and in opposite directions. Now, we've got to check that we're moving in the correct direction. So, if we need, if we're flying and we need to turn right, this wing needs to go down, and this wing needs to come up which means this needs to go down to create lift and this one needs to come up to cause the drag so oh the battery okay so to turn right this has to come up and that one goes down and to turn left this one has to come up sorry this one comes <laughs> this one comes up and then this will tilt this way and to turn right goes this way right left right left and again you might see might need a little bit more adjustment there but that's basically it now we're going to double test the elevator see if that's working yeah you notice there's more trouble on the down. That's probably more useful than having more than uh, down than up actually. So I'm I'm happy with that, and it's not hitting the rudder. Okay. So uh, here I've used uh, some trailing edge balsa, sprayed it white with some primer, so it matches the rest of the tail plane. So what's next? Well, you've got to make all this fit into the cockpit here. Now, I'm using a, a different, I'll oh, undo this by the way. There you go, turn off the radio. I'm using a slightly larger battery. This is um, a 1300 milliamp, 11.1 volt, 3S, which means a three cell. See, it's three cells there. It's an Overlander, 1300, 11. 5 sorry yeah 11.1 sorry 11.1 with a Dean's connector on it because this is how the speed controller comes so what we're going to do is get this out of the way a little bit now this is a little bit wide it will go in it will go in but you have to force it a little bit so I'm going to put it up this way see if it'll go in that way okay and what I want to do is put some velcro on the bottom of the cockpit and some velcro well the top of the cockpit I suppose and the some velcro on the bottom of the battery and this will hold the battery in place and stop it flying around while it's in the air now this means that this should just 
that's the receiver just pushing there and you can start to see that it's starting to neaten up obviously you need this battery end sticking out because you need to connect your battery to your speed controller okay push that all in there there's your speed controller now what you can do if I know where I put it ah here it is grow your canopy now I just want to remind you that um, can I just go and fetch this where have I put it oh yeah here we go just want to remind you that to get the canopy off when you bought your little glider buy yourself some isoprol panel it's 99.9% .9 pure alcohol and this is very good for melting the glue to get this off and this just I'm going to say it falls off but you know it just comes away quite readily also if you're using hot glue guns and you've had a crash and you need to unglue it that will unglue it so there's the Baron's topical tip make a note of that it's worth knowing <coughs> what I may do here what I probably will do is cut this out get some velcro in here and some velcro on there and then pop that in there so when I unpop the canopy it stays with the canopy and then all you have to do then he said unrehearsed is to grab your propeller which comes in the pack now this is one I prepared earlier I'll just take this one out you get these little nylon rings and what you have to do is you have a, a row of these get the one that fits onto this spindle which one this one does push it on and make sure that that presses all the way in okay and that makes this propeller fit this spindle apply your nose cone not all the way up because this needs to catch the spindle on the motor and you pinch that up with a put an allen key I usually use an allen key through there and twist it and that'll stay on and then you're ready for trimming out and as advised before just throw it like a glider don't try and use the motor straight away I know you're enthusiastic to to do that We'll just give it a few throws just to see if it will glide okay because you need to know if you've got the center of balance right and the center of balance or center of gravity on this is 38 millimeters from this leading edge so if you put a ruler from this leading edge and go 38 millimeters back that's your center of gravity now obviously from model to model there's always some slight variation but you start at 38 millimeter from the leading edge back and if it balances all well and good give it a few throws to see if it will glide see if it's in balance see if it's going this way or going that way and when you're satisfied that it's okay put this onto I would say half a throttle to begin with and just give it a good throw and see what happens next if you're really confident with it's flying okay take it up to full throttle but you you, you have to trim this out in the air so it's better to have somebody with you while you're watching this rather than trying to fumble with you trying to feel your way and get them to use the trim for you and just say right or left up elevator or down elevator on the trim and then eventually it'll trim out good enough to you, for you to be able to fly it and take your eyes off it for a second to see what you're doing and then you can do it by feel then so there you go um, I'm pretty sure I don't need to show you how to do that. I'm pretty sure you know how to do that by the uh, watching the rest of the video or the videos. So happy and safe flying. I, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, yeah, maybe I will film myself throwing this in the air. I'm not so sure that I will because most people who, who do this, 
they uh, they throw it into the air and it's like watching golf you, you end up watching something that big and it's all of a sudden it's, it's that big and you can't see it and I don't know why they bother posting it on because you can't see anything so anyway I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, great and safe flying thanks a lot for watching cheerio